Hello, welcome to my channel. We have another landscape done in charcoal. And this is a drawing of a waterfall. It's a pretty detailed drawing with a lot of these rocks and some trees in the background. Let's have a look at how it was done. I often do the initial sketch with a graphite pencil even when I plan to work in charcoal. You can also do the sketch with some vine charcoal which is also easy to erase and modify. But I often use uh, Stadler HB graphite pencil. I just did an initial sketch just to give myself a rough idea where the waterfall will be. It's mostly going to be in the center but uh, slightly more to the left. So there's going to be a couple of uh, slopes on the left and right and uh, the waterfall is going to be in between and there's going to be some coniferous trees above it on both sides. And of course, uh, a lot of rocks, a lot of rocky terrain here. So the first thing I did with these trees uh, was to draw these vertical lines to put some indications where the trees will be. Now these vertical lines won't necessarily be visible once I'm done. But like I said, uh, they are mostly just placeholders. I'm just putting them there to give myself uh, an idea where the trees should be. Some of those lines I will use and uh, build on them by adding some suggestions of branches and canopies. But because these are coniferous trees like firs and pines and things like that, uh, we're not going to have a bunch of leaves. We're going to have clusters of needles, but at the distance they kind of uh, look the same more or less except for the tapering shape of the coniferous trees. So that's mostly what I'm working on. I'm working on achieving a realistic looking shape of those trees. And uh, I mostly used a medium charcoal pencil to draw these and I uh, then softened that with a tortillion. <clears throat> These are Warrison woodless charcoal pencils I use. You can use any brand but I prefer woodless charcoal pencils because uh, they are easier to sharpen. And you can see what a nice tip I have on uh, the medium charcoal pencil that I'm using. By the way it's in a pencil holder right now if you're wondering what that thing is on my pencil. Uh, that's what I use when the pencils get really short. So this rocky slope here, I'm going to cover it with vine charcoal because I need it to be darker. Most of it is in the shadow. So this is a quick way of covering it <clears throat> and giving it some value and before I start working on the detail. Because I can't really uh, work work out the detail if I haven't established some of the larger areas of darker value. And once I've done that I'm going to start uh, working on the <clears throat> smaller relationships. Uh, but I'm also going to be adding a touch of compressed charcoal uh, on top of that vine charcoal just to make some of these areas even darker. Now which, which of these areas am I making darker? Well, I'm making uh, those areas uh, darker which where there will be a little bit more shadow. And when I say compressed charcoal, I basically I'm basically using uh, sharpening residue from my charcoal pencils. So I just sharpen one of my pencils and I use that residue and I use it as a charcoal powder. And then I dab it with my finger to create suggestions of some areas of darker value. So like I said, what are these areas of darker value? Well, if you look at this uh, rocky uh, slope here on the left, uh, you will see that uh, under those trees, which are on top, 
there will be some rocks and there will be some bushes so there's a there's a bushy rocky terrain here and the rocks are going to going to be closer to the water there's going to be uh, less uh, foliage and there's going to be no bushes there uh, but closer to those trees on above those rocks there's going to be some there's going to be some bushes and of course uh, if i want to uh, show their shape I, I need to define uh, <clears throat> relationships between lighter and darker values so under each of these bushes there has to be a little bit of shadow or in between the foliage there has to be more shadow so those leaves which are kind of sticking out or the clusters of leaves which are sticking out and which are facing the light source should be lighter and those areas which are deeper inside the bushes should be darker so that's basically where I'm trying to achieve. As for this lower portion that I'm working on now uh, with my medium charcoal pencil, you can see that I'm drawing some of these irregular lines uh, that look like cracks in rocks. So basically I'm putting down some suggestions of rocky terrain. And once I do that, I'm going to have some nice looking rocks on both sides of the waterfall and then I'm going to start shading them and uh, trying to make them look more 3D so that some parts of them would stand out uh, would stand out a little bit more and uh, because I don't want these lines to stand out too much I'm occasionally using my blending tools I mostly use a brush here I'm using a brush to soften these lines and to make everything look more natural a lot of people often ask which types of brushes I use. I don't know the brand. I just uh, like to use uh, stiff bristle brushes because they can push the charcoal around pretty well. And what I'm using now is a Kohinoor uh, pencil eraser. So it's basically an eraser in a pencil that can be sharpened. And I'm using it to pick out some of the light details on this foliage on these bushes so the reason why I'm doing that is because I want these bushes to be a little bit more 3D <clears throat> and I want some foliage to stand out so you can just imagine we have a rough surface consisting of many many leaves and the light source is mostly coming from above but some parts of those uh, bushes are facing towards the light source and they will be lighter and some some of them will be deeper in those bushes deeper among those leaves and they will be a lot darker so i'm trying to show that contrast so that i can create so that i can suggest to the viewer's eye that this is a whole bunch of bushes there and I'm going to be doing that over and over again until I'm happy with the texture that I'm creating. But like I said, at the same time, I uh, need to keep in mind <clears throat> that my light, light source is coming from uh, above. So the shadow areas are going to be uh, b below. And as long as I stay consistent with that, I think my foliage should look pretty realistic, even though I don't need to draw every single leaf and I don't need to try to copy what I see in my reference photos. So it's all about uh, creating an illusion of detail. And if I want to make a larger area a little bit lighter I can just dab it with a uh, kneaded eraser. So I use the pencil eraser for smaller details and I use the kneaded eraser usually uh, for dabbing and picking up larger areas of charcoal. <clears throat> and now I'm working on the trees here in the background adding some more of these coniferous trees so basically I'm using these vertical lines here and I'm just adding some of these horizontal lines to uh, indicate the shape of a coniferous tree and you can see that we have a couple of larger ones here closer to us and I'm gonna make one of them a little bit lighter like maybe it's getting more light because I want to achieve some contrast and I want it to stand out a little bit more 
And what I'm doing now is I'm also using a soft charcoal pencil in between these rocks and bushes to add a little more extra depth. So I'm increasing the range of value and by increasing the range of value I am also adding more volume and shape to these shapes that I'm trying to create. <clears throat> and for now I'm mostly doing that with the foliage here in the top left corner but I'm going to be doing the same thing with the rocks here below and I'm basically going to be um, adding some darker areas and then uh, pulling some highlights on top of uh, on top of those to make those uh, look like rocks which are which have um, kind of irregular shapes and uh, have many uh, surfaces some of which are facing away from the light source others are facing towards the light source and I want to make it look like those which are facing upwards toward, towards the light source are a lot lighter. So I'm trying to create um, these irregular lines to indicate cracks in the terrain and to indicate smaller and larger rocks. And then I'm using uh, basically contrast between lighter and darker value to give those rocks uh, more shape and depth and to make them stand out to make it uh, to, to make the viewer feel like some of these rocks are kind of uh, jutting forward while other others are deeper in the terrain. So that's basically uh, the idea behind that. And of course every time we're working with charcoal it can be a little bit messy so I have to use my kneaded eraser to clean up every now and then. And in, in addition to the erasers and charcoal pencils naturally I'm also using some blending tools but it's mostly a brush and uh, a tortillion. Each of these tools has its advantages and disadvantages and uh, I recommend that you experiment with all of them and try using all of them at once, combining them and that way you can benefit from their individual advantages. So for example with brushes they allow you to blend larger areas and cover larger areas, pushing a larger amount of charcoal around, whereas tortillions allow for more precision. Uh, it's the same thing with these erasers, so as you can see right, right now I'm using that pencil eraser again, and um, it allows me for more precision, it allows me to draw smaller details to create some more uh, variation in the train, and I'm using a kneaded eraser uh, for the larger bits, even though a kneaded eraser can be molded into uh, into a teardrop shape or a blade-like shape, so it can also be used for some precise drawing, but the thing is that because I'm working mostly with compressed charcoal and that's what uh, these uh, charcoal pencils are made of, it's compressed charcoal, it can be a little bit more difficult to lift up, so I prefer to use a pencil eraser to just rub out some of the highlights, uh, whereas the kneaded eraser is better for cleaning up and lifting up larger areas where I need a little bit less contrast. So you can see how I'm just uh, being selective and going in occasionally here and there in between these rocks, just adding some lighter details and you can see how nicely these rocks are starting to jut out and stand out like we're really looking at uh, uh, rocky terrain and I'm, I'm also trying to add some uh, um, variation to it to make it uh, look a little bit rough uh, like uh, like it's not a very uh, even slope like it's rough terrain and now I'm just gonna add some more trees in the background and after that um, I'm gonna be moving on to the to the water and the waterfall itself. Now here I decided to add a tree which is kind of uh, leaning towards uh, one side uh, like maybe it's uh, been damaged or maybe it's been growing under that angle on that rough terrain, it doesn't really matter but just to make things a little bit more interesting. So I'm just going to add a whole bunch of regular ones here and one which is uh, leaning towards uh, to, to one side here and uh, you can see how I'm using my pencil eraser to to enhance the contrast and make those 
tree trunks uh, which are in front stand out against the background. So I'm adding some smaller ones here because they're further in the back and I'm trying to vary their shape and size as well. I'm trying to avoid uh, my scene to, to look uh, too artificial. I want it to look organic and real. So I'm going over these lines with a totillion again, trying to soften everything a little bit. I will be trying to achieve a little more contrast and texture with the stuff that is in the foreground and I will be trying to achieve a little bit more blurriness and soft edges with the stuff that, it, that that's in the background. And now I'm moving on to the waterfall. So let me just explain my approach here because this can be a little bit tricky. So I'm doing a little bit of scribbling here but it's not entirely random. So what I want to achieve is that I want to make it look like foamy water which is kind of breaking against the rocks. So how do I do that? I need to uh, break out, uh, break apart uh, the, these uh, lighter white areas so that it looks like there are some rocks in between and I'm drawing some suggestions of smaller darker shapes uh, which are for my rocks and I want to make it look like foamy water is kind of going around them and falling around them but to make the water uh, extra foamy I'm also uh, creating rough edges and using a scribbling motion and I won't be blending that too much because I want to keep some of that rough, rough texture and I want to uh, keep it like this uh, so that my pencil isn't covering everything I, want, I don't want to blend everything thoroughly I want some of these smaller lighter areas lighter spaces in between to remain so I'm basically creating this uh, light noise, light texture in between which I couldn't really do if I tried to draw every single drop and every single detail but I'm kind of trying to allow my pencil to work for me and that's a very important thing when drawing you have to understand that your pencil in, a, in the combination with the grain of the paper will naturally create some textures and you need to use those textures to your advantage uh, think of it like a happy accident but uh, it's not entirely an accident some of it is intentional uh, but I am scribbling and I am trying to produce some uh, textures and later I can modify some of them I can remove some of them but I can also use some of them to my advantage <clears throat> because I'm trying to produce a texture that kinda looks like foamy water So I'm going to work a little bit on the other side as well. Maybe draw some suggestions of rocks here at the bottom as well. <coughs> but I'm mainly going to continue to work on this water here. Uh, we want to have a, a lot of these uh, uh, streams which are kind of breaking against uh, against the rocks and uh, splashing around. Now I am y using my uh, tutillions here and there a little bit, but like I said, I want to keep some of this rough texture so that uh, I can create that foamy look of the water because I couldn't really produce that type of texture by erasing, or it would be extremely, extremely difficult and tedious. Now one thing that I could do, I could go back in with a white gel pen or something like that, but I don't think that, that would look uh, very good. I don't really like uh, using those types of tools. Some people use them regularly, but I don't think they look very good in real life. So I like to work from light to dark and reserve the white spaces whenever possible and then use erasers when, whenever I can. So here the rock is a little bit deeper in the shadow, so I'm going to draw some darker areas here. And uh, like I said, I'm mostly using the medium charcoal pencil. But what, what I like to do is, I like to use the medium charcoal, pe charcoal pencil to do most of the shading and to draw most of the details. 
and then I add a touch of soft charcoal to add some extra value. Here on this water here I used vine charcoal again because I want to create a slightly smoother look and um, what I want to try to create there I, I want to make it look like the water is kind of uh, still with just a few ripples down there and it's kind of foamy at the bottom so I'm kind of hoping that I'll be able to achieve that look so I'm just drawing some more uh, water falling down, falling down here and uh, the, the really foamy part uh, begins uh, at the bottom of these and that's why I'm gonna draw uh, a little bit of shadow there you can see that I'm uh, pushing the charcoal gently with a soft brush because I don't want these areas to remain completely white so it can be tempting to leave the water of the waterfall completely white so that you can create more contrast but the thing is that you can't leave it completely white because then it would look uh, completely flat and it would look kind of weird because this whole area this whole waterfall is or the sides of it are facing away from the light source so all of it needs to be at least partly in the shadow and I'm just going to try to uh, make some parts of that uh, foamy water a little bit lighter uh, in those parts uh, where the rocks are kind of facing uh, towards the light source. So I'm adding some more trees on the other side as well. I'm trying to draw something that kind of looks like uh, irregular shapes of coniferous trees, maybe pines, and uh, in front of them uh, we're going to have a whole bunch of rocks. So I want to create something that kind of looks like uh, um, two, two walls of rocks on both sides and splashing water in between and if you look at these trees above the waterfall now the trees are not growing out of the water what I'm trying to uh, make it uh, look like is that there are some trees further in the distance behind that waterfall obviously and because the river is kind of winding and we can't predict uh, its uh, path entirely maybe some of the trees uh, appear to be above the waterfall uh, one of the things that I often talked about in my uh, landscape videos is how in addition to the range of value you should always strive to create uh, by the way I'm I use the pencil eraser to add some more trickling water here on the sides. That I, I think that really adds a lot to the realism when you're drawing waterfall and uh, scenes like that. So just a few of these uh, uh, streams, tiny streams of, uh, stric of trickling water on the sides and I, I think that re really adds a lot to the whole impression. So I want. Uh, so I started talking about a range of value. So, like I said, in addition to the range of value, you always want to have a nice range of textures because in the in nature you'll see all kinds of materials, all kinds of uh, surfaces, and you kind of want to try to capture that in your landscape drawing as well. So you can see that my the texture of the trees above is a lot different than those bushes in the top left and the texture of the rocks is a lot different than the texture of the bushes and the texture of the water so uh, I'm just um, I'm just trying to use the the pencil in combination with the with the paper to create some nice textures and modify them to my liking and like I said it's always important to relax and to allow your pencil to work for you when you allow your pencil to work for you you will be able to create an incredible amount of detail without actually even trying uh, but <clears throat> the thing is that behind those happy accidents there, there is always intention there is always an idea there is always a certain amount of experience because you have to be able to recognize these happy accidents that you're creating 
and you have to be able to use them to your advantage. And I don't think this is uh, something that a completely inexperienced artist can do. Obviously, even artists with less experience can benefit from this approach, but um, all of it takes practice. And uh, um, as I always say, every single drawing even though I call them tutorials, but it's also a learning process for me as well. Every single drawing, a drawing is also a new experience and a learning process for me as well. And I often like to pick subjects where I can push myself and practice a little bit. So the last time when I drew a waterfall, uh, there was a lot more foliage and a lot fewer rocks. The reason why I picked this scene is because I really wanted to uh, practice drawing these rocks so that's what I was mostly drawn to rather than the trees and the water and you will see that these rocks will be taking up a huge portion of this drawing so you can see how as I'm scribbling I'm trying to separate some areas of lighter and darker value I'm trying to make indications of some shapes of rocks there and um, they are starting to sh take shape. I may modify them later. I may modif modify them quite a bit later, but at least now I have some sort of a structure that I can work with. I have some sort of an idea what kind of terrain uh, I'm uh, trying to draw here, and the viewer has some sort of an idea of the type of the terrain as well. So it's a very rocky terrain on the sides of this waterfall. And another thing that I kind of didn't like about these shapes that I created was that um, the lines were a little bit too parallel for my taste. So later you will see me breaking up uh, those shapes so that everything would look a lot less regular and so that everything would look uh, appear a lot more random. So I realized that these rocks on the right were a little bit too light and I needed to make them a bit darker. Which is why I started uh, covering them with some additional charcoal. First by blending everything with a brush and then by adding a little bit of soft charcoal on top of that. I used the soft charcoal uh, in two ways. First I get, went over some of the darker areas to add a little bit of extra depth but then I also went over these individual shapes of rocks and started adding a little bit of shadow and texture on the sides of some of them because uh, like I said you always have to keep in mind the direction of the light source and naturally the light source is almost always coming from above so all of the faces or all of the sides of these rocks which are facing upwards will be lighter and all of the sides which are kind of facing towards us which are facing away from the light source or partly away from the light source they will be quite a bit darker and because these rocks have so many of these rough irregular shapes there's, there also has to be a, a lot of high contrast between these um, uh, surfaces of lighter value and those uh, which are in the shadow which are of darker value and another thing that I noticed was that the the left side had a little bit more texture it seemed like there are some smaller finer rocks there so I started breaking apart these shapes into smaller rocks trying to make the right side um, a little bit more interesting as well adding a little bit more texture to it adding a few more details here and there a few more a few more of these smaller shapes so that it would appear a little bit more balanced with the left side, a little bit more, well, not exactly symmetrical, but just a little bit more balanced. And so that we can have an idea that this is the same type of terrain on both sides of the waterfall, even though there will be some differences because we'll going, we're going to have a, a large mass of these slightly larger rocks on the right. And I'm pretty happy with the amount of value on both sides uh, of the waterfall. 
and I'm going to be adding a little bit more extra texture and depth here and there but after this I'm mostly going to want to enhance uh, enhance these textures using a pencil eraser and uh, once again a pencil eraser is used so that I'm um, almost randomly, not exactly completely randomly, but I'm picking out some of the lighter shapes uh, which are kind of some of these rocks which are jutting out and facing upwards and I'm just kind of picking them out uh, hoping to add a little more sense to make a little more sense out of the scene and also add a little bit more detail to entertain the eye or fool the eye like there's a whole a bunch of uh, details and textures there. So this is a slightly more complex drawing than some of the other ones but it's not overly complex. It takes about three, three and a half hours to draw something like this. If you're in good shape, if uh, you're a little bit less experienced artist, it may take quite a bit longer. But if you're a better artist or a more experienced artist than me, then it might take even less. Uh, and by the way, uh, the size of the paper that I'm working on here is about 9 times 12 inches, but I chose to create a slightly wider margin around it. Uh, but the drawing itself is going to be around um, nine, sti 9 times 12 inches. Alright, so on to this foamy part, uh, the lower portion of the waterfall. So the water was kind of just dropping in the upper part of it. Here it's uh, sliding uh, uh, or above these rocks and kind of um, splashing all around. And here I'm going to want to create a little bit less contrast and a little bit more of these white areas. Um, maybe, maybe uh, a little bit less texture. And I'm creating, I'm going to create some of those shapes and some of the texture using a tortilla. Because, like I said, I want a little bit less contrast here, and I want slightly gentler shapes. And here I'm uh, trying to pull some ripples in uh, in that water below. I'm also adding some details of splashing water here and there just to make everything a little bit more detailed. But as for this still water down below, I'm going to be adding just a few ripples here and there just a few touches uh, with a pencil eraser and then I'm mostly going to be done uh, with the water but uh, in order to create this foamy look and in order to uh, separate the lighter shapes from the darker ones first you need to be able to create contrast and in order to be able to create contrast obviously you need a little bit of value that's why I'm using a soft brush to push the charcoal around even on top of these white white areas so that later I can easy, easily go back in and enhance the contrast. So I created some nice ripples here below and I'm just adding a few highlights on the surface of the water using a pencil eraser. And after that I'm going to be tackling this whole mass of uh, boulders and rocks on the left. And now I'm starting to work on these rocks in the foreground. I'm scribbling a little bit. At the same time trying to draw some cracks here and there. I'm kind of uh, running out of space here because uh, of the wide, wide margin I create, uh, created with this protective tape. But it's fine. I think I'm going to be able to include everything I wanted. I want a nice looking composition 
that's why I want to include some things in the foreground, some of them in the mid-ground and some in the back background. So these are all of the things that you need to keep in mind when constructing a drawing, when constructing a picture, especially a landscape one. So I decided to compress this video into about 40 minutes or so. I don't think I sped it up too much because uh, I said um, I think the real-time footage is around three and a half, maybe a little bit less than four hours. So some of this is in real time, some of, some of it is in time lapse. And even in those areas where I use time lapse, I tried not to speed up too much so that you can follow along. Now, as for those who want to see longer videos and who want to see uh, all of the videos with all of my drawing techniques, I strongly recommend um, that you visit my Patreon channel because on the Patreon channel you can find uh, some full-length videos, narrated videos, where I talk at length about my, uh, about my techniques and tools and things like that. And you can observe my drawing technique in real time. In case uh, something happens to Patreon, and in case you don't like using Patreon, you can also go to my Subscribestar page, where you will find more and more content as I will be adding more and more of these longer full-length uh, drawing videos. So as you can see, I've done uh, <laughs> the larger portion of this drawing, and I'm just uh, moving on to this final lower right corner with some rocks in the foreground. These are going to be a little bit larger and the texture is going to be a little less fine so I'm trying to uh, draw some of these larger cracks, larger shapes and if I can pull it off I can I'll really be able to create some depth in my drawing because we'll be able to feel like we have some rocks in front of the in front of the other rocks and the waterfall and like those trees, trees are uh, well behind them so our scene will have quite a bit of depth I apologize if I'm being repetitive with some of the explanations but it's just that uh, when you keep doing the same thing over and over again, obviously some of, the, some of these things will be uh, repeating themselves. Because the same thing that I used on the rocks on the left, I'm going to do obviously the same thing on the right. And I also apologize if some of my explanations are not um, maybe clear to everybody. I'm doing the best I can. I'm trying to use some of the terms that artists should be familiar with. I'm a self-taught artist, but I I don't really think there is such a thing as a self-taught artist in modern in modern times because we all have access to all kinds of tutorials and all sources of knowledge on the internet. So you can always build on the on other people's experiences and knowledge, and you can share your experiences as well. Um, you can see that I skipped ahead over a part of the footage here where I did a little bit more texturing on these rocks and I just added a few more touches of the splashing water on the lower portion of the waterfall and I'm just trying to add a bit more here and there just to make everything look a little more interesting and um, to, to make the water look a little bit more random and I think the waterfall is looking pretty good. Uh, my main goal here now is to try to make these rocks in the foreground stand out so that the viewer can really feel like they're separate objects. I want to push uh, the, the mass of rocks behind them a little bit further behind. I want to make it clear that they're in the, in the mid-ground while the, the ones in the lower right corner are, are in the foreground. 
And here I also decided to add a few more of these trees because I wasn't really happy with the shapes there. Uh, I decided to modify some of the shapes of those trees here on the right. Uh, don't really have uh, any particular explanation, it's just that I, uh, I just wanted to make a few changes, that's about it. This is the finished drawing, as you can see. I'm going to put down my signature in the lower left corner. I'm going to sign one of these rocks. And that's it. Uh, that will be all for this landscape drawing. And like I said, if you want to see longer videos, go to my Patreon channel or the Subscribe Star page. And don't forget to check out my other videos, don't forget to subscribe. I have lots of uh, drawings of landscapes, but also animals, portraits, all kinds of stuff. Whatever it is that you like. So that'll be all for this video. I'm going to see you in the next one. Thank you for watching and bye for now.